Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today we're going to expand the utility of the Motor Controls Trainer Board we've been using in the last several applications exercises by wiring up the control transformer. The purpose of the control transformer is to establish pilot level voltage. Pilot level voltage is utilized by control elements in a ladder logic diagram, like push buttons, relays, and coils to govern the operation of primary or power level devices, like electric motors and hydraulic systems. Before we begin, let me remind you, I am not an electrician and you cannot use anything in this or any other lecture as professional electrical advice. Follow the rules, follow the code. It's there for a reason, to protect people and property from hazards arising from the use of electricity. Some of the material and techniques you may see in this lecture may not be utilized for a permanent approved installation, but is for demonstration purposes only. This content has been developed for edification only. While reasonable care has been exercised with respect to its accuracy, I assume no responsibility for errors, omissions, or suitability for any application or misapplication of its contents. Let us begin. Pilot level voltage, among its many flavors, can either be 24 volts DC or 120 volts AC. For the purposes of this application, we're going to wire up the previously installed control transformer to step down the 208 volt line to line voltage of a light industrial three phase AC system to 120 volts AC. This would necessitate a step down transformer with a primary to secondary winding ratio of 1.73 to 1. Additionally, we'll install a fuse in the low voltage pilot output of the control transformer to protect against short circuits and faults in the ladder logic. Finally, we'll learn how to ground reference the pilot voltage. First, Gather the associated datasheet and wiring diagram, voltage links, fuse holder, and finger safe covers. Note the circuit breaker is open and the plug is locked out and tagged out for the first portion of this exercise. Note the wiring diagram shows that in order to set up this control transformer for a 208 to 120 volt conversion, we need to supply primary terminals one and two with any two phases of our light industrial three phase AC system. These would be the H1 and H2 primary inputs for a simplified control transformer schematic. Note this particular control transformer can also be utilized for 277 and 380 volt systems if a technician were to make use of the other primary terminals. This versatility allows a manufacturer to distribute this particular control transformer to different customers making use of different voltage schemes or located in different countries. An ohmmeter used to check the resistance of the primary windings from 1 to 2 shows continuity and a resistance of 12-ish ohms. Additionally, the wiring diagram shows that there are two sets of secondary windings, one from terminals 1 to 3 and another from terminals 2 to 4. An ohmmeter used to check the resistance of the first secondary winding from 1 to 3 shows continuity and a resistance of 11-ish ohms. An ohmmeter used to check the resistance of the second secondary winding from terminals 2 to 4 also shows continuity and a resistance of 11-ish ohms. The wiring diagram shows these two windings must be placed in parallel with one another by tying terminals 1 and 2 and terminals 3 and 4 together. Making use of the manufacturer supplied voltage links, the two secondary windings are placed in parallel with one another without the use of messy wires. An ohmmeter used to check the resistance of the two secondary windings in parallel with one another from 1, 2 to 3, 4 shows continuity and resistance of 6-ish ohms, exactly what one would expect when two 11-ish ohm elements are placed in parallel with one another. Next, we'll install a fuse in the secondary output. The wiring diagram indicates a fuse clip needs to be installed from the now conjoined terminals 1, 2 to terminal 5. An appropriately sized fuse can now be inserted in the fuse clips. Note the wiring diagram shows terminal five is directly connected to terminal six. This means the fused output of the control transformer secondary is between terminal six and conjoined terminals three, four. These will now be our new X1 and X2 pilot level points of connection for simplified control transformer schematic, essentially the vertical upright rails on our ladder logic diagram. We can now supply the primary terminals 1 and 2 with phase L1 and L2. Note I'm grabbing the output of the circuit breaker. 
If the circuit breaker is open, this would similarly de-energize the control transformer and all devices immediately downstream of it, thus offering a single point of control. L1 and L2 are respectively routed to the 1 and 2 primary inputs of the control transformer through the cable tray. When the plug is inserted and the circuit breaker closed, note the primary input of the control transformer receives approximately the 208 volt line to line voltage. The secondary output supplies approximately the required 120 volt pilot level voltage between X1 and X2, terminal 6, and the conjoined terminals 3-4. To make later applications exercises more organized, we can route pilot level voltage to an additional pair of terminal blocks to the right of the circuit breaker. When the circuit breaker is open and the plug is locked out and tagged out, the output of the control transformer can be routed through the cable tray to these terminal blocks. When the plug is inserted and the circuit breaker closed, note the terminal blocks now receive pilot level voltage. Note this pilot level 120 volt AC voltage is floating in that there is no reference to ground. If the system necessitated grounded pilot voltage, one customarily does so on the X2 or far right vertical upright on a ladder logic diagram. One includes a ground reference by locking out and tagging out the system and connecting the ground wire to the X2 output of the control transformer, in this case, the right hand terminal block. Note when the system is energized, the control transformer still exhibits a close to 120 volt differential between terminal blocks X1 and X2, only this time it's referenced from ground and not floating. Since it is from these distribution points the ladder logic diagram originates and terminates, let's include some labels, X1 and X2. Finally, since the control transformer features some exposed energized connections, let's include some finger safe covers over the primary and secondary terminals. If you catch your lab partner poking around underneath these covers while the system is energized, you have my permission to viciously beat them with whatever tool you have close at hand, even if that tool happens to be sharp or heavy. Later application exercises and lectures will make use of the pilot level voltage supplied by the control transformer to govern the operation of an electrically controlled system using ladder logic. Cost for this setup was pretty minimal. After all, it's just a control transformer, a couple plastic covers, and some wires. The most expensive part of this whole setup is the fuse. A blown fuse on the secondary is an indication of an inadvertent short on the ladder logic circuit because of operator error. While monetarily inexpensive, a replacement fuse is at the end of a long, long hallway full of push-ups. If you don't want to travel this hallway, by all means, follow the wiring diagrams as intended and pay close attention to detail. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your Lazy Lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.